clipped that little. Uh oh. Uh oh. Remember that story I did about that MMA fighter who um, said that he's not raising black children. He adopted two little. He adopted two little. Goddamn. <laughs> two little urchins. Save two little puppies from the pound and said he's not raising them to be black. He's raising them to be good men. And, of course, black people got mad. So here's Ryan Clark, our friend of the Just channel. This is our friend of the channel, Ryan Clark, talking to Mike Chandler about <laughs> a quote out of a hour long interview that he did on another platform that black Twitter completely reacted to like some jackasses and disgusting jackasses, some deplorable, like when they, when Hillary Clinton caught said deplorable, she should have said that about black Twitter, black Twitter are some deplorables. They're terrible people. And now Ryan Clark says, as a black man, I shared my thoughts with Mike in his conversation. I agree with him that skin color isn't the most important thing about his babies. Still, many in this country see skin color. <laughs> and it's you. It's people like you. You the one that see skin color. It's you. People like you. That's why, that's why you never go to goddamn grocery store and see no black people adopting with no adopted white kids. But if you in DC and you go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, you guaranteed to see at least one couple in there with a goddamn black kid. A, a old, a old ethnic looking black kid, a black kid that looked like a black kid that looked like he. He literally fell off a goddamn, fell out of a coconut tree, man. <laughs> that Ryan Clark going to chastise him. They see it first, and sometimes only. Michael and Bree exude love, but their children need to be prepared for the hate their skin color can elicit. <laughs> Yo. We're going to get into this, man. We're going to get in. You know what? I was going to do Bum B. I'm going to do Bum B afterwards, man. Cause this, this this dude, he making me mad, man. Goddamn Ryan Clark. You goddamn jackass. You make me mad, man. You goddamn jackass, you, man. Ryan Clark, man, you making me mad, man. So I gotta, I gotta do it, man. I gotta do it, man. I gotta do it, man. I don't wanna do it, man. But I gotta do it, man. I gotta do it, man. I gotta do it, man. Jeez. It, anything other than thanks, thank you, white man, for saving these two kids that I couldn't, that niggas would have never <laughs> in a million years gave a good home to. Thank you, Ryan Clark. I mean, thank you. Um, what's, what's his name? Thank you. Chandler, Mike Chandler, for, for what you've done for these kids, man. That's it. That's the whole length of the conversation. Pause. Man, Mike, I just want to thank you for adopting these two little black kids, man. What you did to adopt these two little black kids, man, it's heartwarming, man. And it warmed my heart seeing your story. And whatever you said about not raising them as being black kids, but raising them as being good men, 
I totally understood that. I'm not a moron. I understand what you mean when you say that. I'm not a I'm not a P brain low IQ moron that can't understand that. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. That's how the conversation could go. If this dude, Ryan Clark, had any class, shout out to the Nate Ways. If Ryan Clark had an ounce of class and an ounce of decency, that's what he would have told this white guy. Thank you for raising this little kid, these two little black kids, in a place where they won't have to worry about stray bullets. Because listen, man, I live in a white town now. I live in a white town now. The only people who fire guns in public are the few blacks that have moved up here and the few Latinos that have moved up here. You don't have to worry about that shit. Salute. Now, do things happen? Yes, there's one-offs here and there all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Chandler for saving these two black kids from the puppy pound, raising them up like your own, you and your beautiful wife, raising these kids up like your own because they are yours. God chose these kids for you. Just like anybody else who has children, they were chosen. Your kids came Another way, shout out to you and your beautiful wife for everything good that you're doing. We salute you. If there's any assistance you need, none of them niggas said, hey, man, you got, you need any help, man? You need any tickets? What sport do your kids like? Do they like football? Hey, man, they need some tickets. None of them nappy-headed, bubble lip niggas like Ryan Clark and all the mother f podcasters, all them Twitter niggas, none of them asked this dude was there anything they could do to help these fucking kids. Or can I meet these kids? What's their names, man? All they want to do is insinuate, well, this color of their skin, everyone sees the color of their skin, and white people is going to treat them bad because the color of their skin, asshole. A white person adopted them. Press one. Asshole. A white person is the one who picked them up from the pound. From the puppy pound. You asshole. You asshole. It was a white dude that picked them up from the pound. You asshole. And living with those white people, it'll be safer than they... There's no black person they could live with. Even if they live with goddamn LeBron James, they wouldn't be as safe as they would be just living with these white people in a white neighborhood. As a black man, I shared my thoughts with Mike in this conversation. I agree with him that skin color isn't the most important thing about his babies. Still... Many in this country see color. They see it first, and sometimes only. Michael and Bree exude love, but their children need to be prepared for the state this kid can elicit. I love that they don't parent with fear, but as they grow awareness of racism and racial bias, it saved their lives. So he's telling these white parents that becoming aware of racism and racial bias will save these kids' lives. You're an asshole, man. Staying away from niggas like you or say these kids' lives. Because if you wouldn't have played in the fucking NFL, you would have probably been in the penitentiary. Your big dumb ass would have been in the penitentiary if you couldn't run a 4-5 four, four, and couldn't hit like a Mack truck. You would have been in the goddamn penitentiary. I'm not raising black children. I'm raising my children. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that soundbite obviously can be clipped. That little five seconds can be clipped. And it's, and of course, I would say, wait a second, that's, but if you dive deeper thing, into yeah. it, right, it was all about th their, their, their skin color is not the most important thing about them. Bro, I've seen you with your kids. You know, they're your kids. Mm -hmm. And I know the type of love they get, the type of upbringing that you're giving them. And I think they're so blessed to have both you and Bree from a black man's point of view. No, from an asshole idiot's point of view. From an idiot asshole black person who, yes, does represent a lot of black people. I'll give him that. What he's about to say, even though I haven't heard it, I do know that a lot of black people, whatever he's going to say, a lot of black people agree with it. It does. He he can just cut and paste from any stereotypical black comments in a situation like this. But it's still. Let me let me let me be nice to Ryan for a second. Yes, these are just run of the mill black thoughts. This is how black people talk. This is how they think. So I I really got to ease up on him a little bit because this is how black people think. This is the low IQ rationale, uh, inability to problem solve, inability to reason. This is that that's about to come out. When we talk about like just the sound bite, sound bite and I listened to it all, I read about, I read it all from a transcript. Thank you, Mike Chandler, for rescuing these two little black kids from the puppy pound and giving them a great life. If they ever need tickets or they ever want to come to the podcast behind the scenes and see how we do things, they can come, they can walk around and see, uh, play with the cameras and the lighting and shit and take a tour of the facility. That's it, man. That's all you got to say to him, Ryan. Anything else, man, you out of line. Anything else, you out of line. Press one. Christian standpoint, it's there are things that we encounter because of our skin color. Bloods, Crips, GDs, Hoovers, neighborhood Crips, Marlo, niggas from Martin Luther King at Junior Avenue, niggas from Mega Evers Boulevard, niggas from Malcolm X Avenue, niggas from Harlem, niggas from Detroit, sun men from D.C., sun men from Baltimore, sun men from Richmond, sun men from Raleigh, Durham, sun men from Charlotte, sun men from Columbia, South Carolina, some men from Charleston, some men from Charlottesville, some men from Miami, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, some men from St. Petersburg, West Palm Beach, Miami, some men from Alabama, some men from Georgia, Atlanta. I mean, uh, so I mean, from every single place you go, the only people that are going to do something to this kid, fire a gun at this kid in public, is a black person. The only person that's going to make them feel bad about something or clown them or laugh at them or gawk at them or point at them or be out of line or stop cross boundaries or step over lines or act like assholes. The only people that's going to do that to them are black people. You know how I know? Look at what you're doing now. Press one. That people who are not African American can't necessarily understand. And that's why I thought you gave the best answer you could give without having the conversation with someone who has been pulled over and been scared with someone. Asshole. 
you ain't no black person, and I know you know this. When you around your black friends, y'all don't talk like this. Let me tell y'all white people something, man, because he's making me mad. When we around other black people, we don't talk about that shit. Oh, I'm scared. We'll be in the crib drinking, tipsy drunk. Oh, man, pass the liquor. Oh, man, we ain't got no more liquor, man. Oh, shit, we ain't no more liquor. Hey, man, who gonna go get the liquor, man? Nigga be like, you is. All right, man, give me the keys. Nigga get the keys, stagger to the car, turn the shit on. Hey, ride with me, man. All right, cool. We got, cause I, your man got the weed, right? Yeah, yeah, we gonna stop get some weed after we get the liquor. And drive off. And don't think twice about it. I'm a nigga. I've been around niggas, man. What Brian Clark is telling you in this shit is bullshit. It's horse shit. Cockamamie horse shit. I don't know one nigga that lead a house and think about the goddamn police. Only if they might have a dead tags or no tags or some shit like that. They ride dirty. Maybe if they go on to deliver a fucking quarter, quarter pound of weed or go on to deliver a couple ounces of coke. But other than that, it's no nigga that think about the police, man. None. It's all bullshit. Who has been called the N-word with someone who was thought of less than strictly based on the color. Being called the N-word, you know who gonna call him the N-word a thousand times every day? of our skins for you, you just thinking with your heart and you're preparing the world as a man who loves all people when you have to prepare your sons for a world that hates them just because of the color of their skin. <laughs> Yo, man, this is disgusting, man. To tell this man that the world hates his children this asshole is telling this white dude that his that the world hates his kids because of the color of their skin. Why would you tell somebody that? Why would you tell somebody that? Hey man, what's up, man? Hey, shit, man. Oh, that's your kids. Hey man, let me pull you to the side, man. Hey. Hey man. The world hates your kids, man, because the color of their skin, man. Just want to let you know, man. All right, bro. Stay up, man. Just want to let you know that. Who told? Who tell somebody that? Why you not bringing good tidings? Why this nigga not? bringing glad tidings, man. Why he not bringing glad tidings and shit? <laughs> and this dumbass white dude, he gonna believe that shit. You know the white dude gonna believe it. Because Ryan is authentically black, man. And yes, Ryan is authentically black. This is how black people think and talk. Especially the white people. They have a whole different talk when it comes to white people. The niggas is around and man, I'm gonna kill that nigga, man. I swear to God, that nigga keep playing with me. I'm gonna kill his ass. Nah, dog, don't do that shit, man. Let that shit ride. Nah, man, I'm gonna kill that nigga next time I see him, man. Fuck that shit, man. Nigga, play with me, man. Fuck, he think he was looking at, looking at me, looking at who, like, nigga, nigga, nigga. Nigga, if so and so was home, that nigga wouldn't even fucking be breathing. That we fool. That's how niggas talk. 
When white people come around, it's <laughs> I was scared of the police. As a white man, can you use your privilege to help me <laughs> not have to get pulled over by the police seas? Because you have privilege. Talk to Mr. Charlie for me. Can you please talk to Mr. Charlie for me, Mr. White Man? <laughs> These niggas ain't shit, man. One day you're going to change the world. But I do believe that was part of like the, the backlash of it. It was that people who have been through the hurt that we have sometimes because of the color of our skin was like, man, you may be doing them a disservice because your love is so deep by not teaching them the hate of, a wor of the world. And I've seen you, man, like you love this country. Like we talked about it at the White House. We don't want to be anywhere else, but there are uglier parts of it. Hold up. Let me let I mean, you an asshole, man. And... All of y'all are assholes. All a lot of black people are assholes. Um, I'm black, and I'm not gonna put that in their heads at a young age. I'm not putting any limits, limiting beliefs at that age. Shout out. <laughs> and he's yo, he can't he in the comment section, all right? Eh? Yo. <laughs> Think about how sick this guy is, right? This person said, I'm black. I'm not going to put that in their heads at a young age. I'm not putting any limiting beliefs at a young age. This nigga, Ryan Clark, got in the comment section and was like, oh, hold up. <laughs> hold up, hold up. <laughs> I'm a highly successful black man who all of these conversations young who had all of these conversations young. It made me aware, never fearful, and only made me grind harder. I never wanted an excuse and never gave any. This is about being limitless, not limited. In order to win, you have to know the opponent. So white people is your opponent, Ryan. White people is your opponent. Every coach this fucking guy ever had was a white dude, man. White people is your opponent. Shout out to my man, Nate Ways, man. All you, every color hit the like button, man. Every color, every shade hit the like button. So white people is your opponent, Ryan. When you play for Nick Saban at LSU, was he your opponent? When you play for Bill Cowher at the Steelers, was he your opponent? When you play for Tom Coughlin with the Giants, was he your opponent? When you play for, I forgot who you played for, the Redskins, he was either, maybe Joe Gibbs. That was it Joe Gibbs? Might have been Joe Gibbs. Yeah, was he your opponent? What the fuck is you talking about, nigga? Your agent, your opponent? I don't know who his agent is. Well, let me look up who Ryan. I'm going to drop the link in a second, man. We won't get into it, man. I want to know what this nigga agent is, man. Who is Ryan Clark's agent? Okay. Well, let's let let's look up Ryan Clark's agent. All right. Let's let's look up Ryan, who who handles Ryan's contracts. Let's see who handles Ryan's contracts. Okay, so shout out to him, man. He got a black agent, man. I'll give him that. I'll give Ryan that, man. You got a black agent. Dave Muga. Dave Murugeta. Okay. I'll give you that. At least you got a black agent, man. Raising kids, raising black kids to be colorblind in this country is irresponsible. Let me drop the link, man. <coughs> raising black kids in this country to be.
Raising black kids in this country to be colorblind is irresponsible. What's happening, man? What's cracking, partner? Ain't nothing, man. I'm hanging, man. Hanging on, man. Yeah, man. Glad to see you back, man. Yeah, man. Glad to see you guys, man. Glad everybody, everybody's back in action, man. <coughs> it's, it's, it's been a, a rough week, but you know how it is, man. Yeah, man. Every- Every week ain't going to be the best, man. You just got to take it day by day. Yeah, one day at a time, man. Definitely. And that's what, that's what, that's, everything's real spiritual, man. Sometimes you get sick for a reason, man. Sometimes things, oh, a lot of times things happen for a reason. And, you know, like, sometimes you just got to fucking stop what you're doing and do something different because, the sickness could be telling you, hey, man, stop what you're doing. Do something different. Mm. Yep. You know? You know, that, that's my philosophy when it comes to getting victimized by a brother. You know, sometimes she mm. has a reason, you know? I, I ain't need that car. I ain't even want that car. Mm. Damn, look at the bright side, man. Yeah, man, sometimes you got to look at the bright side, man. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Ryan um, Clark, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Yo, yo, real quick, real quick. Not no bullshit. I, I had a friend tell me that. I, he told me he's a little, he's super liberal, but he had a 14 year old son kid put a gun in his face and took his car, right? This guy told me it was a blessing in disguise. He said that the insurance paid him out more than the car was worth. That little son could have killed you, bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Bro, uh, bro, Ryan Clark, every time I hear him, man, I just, I don't understand how you can have this much hate and, and animus in your heart, bro. He got a, he has an ugly heart, bro. He just a, he just a, he's an evil person, bro. Like, if, if I was a glider, I would. Why would you? Why would I want to associate with somebody like him? And he has nothing positive to say about my race, bro. They give him awards. He won Emmys. He sports in. I mean, um, ESPN just gave him a big fat contract extension. He's paused. He's he's got his own podcast, man. This is yo. He's rewarded for this shit. And and other and other sons see it, so it's like, oh, I get to dunk on gliders, and they fucking give me max contracts to do this shit, bro. Y'all just telling you, you just you you're feeding the problem, bro. If you against anti white whiteness, bro, like Dude. y'all, I gotta, well, not y'all in the chat, but <laughs> some has Let's to be about this shit, bro. I was in when I was in D.C. Um, I think this was probably what, earlier this week. This is before I got real sick. And this was like the night my wife really got sick. So we had this black tie event because one of her mentors, some some lady who'd been mentoring her for years, was getting an award from this foundation. This foundation, um, from this Swiss guy, this billionaire, he um created an award for um for like um you know like people in like uh professors and authors and just people who like write books and write and whatnot. So this 
this woman, she, this old woman, she's like 80. She's getting honored, black woman. And we, I'm in a tux. I rented a tux. My wife's in a dress, and we're there, right? And it's like, well, derves. It's a red carpet. We got took pictures. It was at the African American um, um, History Museum in D.C. It was a, it was the best event I've ever been to. I've never been to nothing like that. So anyway, we sitting at the table. They seat us at a table, and, and we're seated there with with this one guy. He was a cool guy, dynamite guy. He knew my wife, right, from another um, uh, job that, that they had done before in the past, right? So they're talking whatnot, and I ended up talking with him, so we became, like, you know, like event buddies. We was buddies during that event, right? At the table, it's nothing but white people. At every table, it's mostly white people. The, the billionaire who sponsored this is a white dude. Every single person that's in charge of it is white. A smattering of black people that she, that the woman who was being honored knew were there and a smattering of black people were on the staff. That was, you know, the, the little staff that was running, that, you know, running the event and shit, bringing out the plates and shit, cleaning up and changing everything. But it was 80% white at least 80% white people in the whole thing. This nigga sitting at the table cracking jokes about white people, talking about white folks, this and yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah, white folks. And them white people didn't even look at him. They didn't even, they didn't even look over like, you know how like you're a gas, you might be eating and you hear something, you're like, you cut your pearls or you just turn because something you heard. And he was cracking jokes about white people. Not like cracking them, but anytime something was said, because it was speakers up there, anytime something was said, he was like, yeah, white people, they always keeping the brother down. If we had what white people had, we'd be, and it's like, and it was just like, yo, I'm sitting there and I'm not saying nothing. I'm just, I'm not even laughing. I'm like giving a half smile or whatever. I'm like, yo, man, stop saying that shit to me. Like, like, I'm with that shit, man. I ain't with that shit, nigga. But he kept saying them little jokes, and them white yes. people just had to eat that shit. But that's the thing. Because because sons have a high mind, he, he, he knows that he can get that shit off around other sons. And for the most part, they won't. It won't be any pushback to it, bro. It, don't, it doesn't matter how ridiculous that shit sounds yeah. like. But that shit was a shame because that woman, she was being honored, man. And no black people would honor her. Like she's not in a rapper. She she wrote a book like 40 years ago that became like a cult book for like uh uh feminist and shit, right? And she's being honored by that. No black people honor for that. She's not singing. She's not dancing. She don't fucking, you know what I'm saying? She ain't a talk show host or nothing like that. This is a, a woman that's, you know, you wouldn't know her if you didn't read books, right? And I'm talking about, like, being my mom, being an author, I know that. So authors ain't, like, known like that. This woman was not known. These white people threw a big-ass gala for her and she got on stage and of course you know when she was on stage she talked about black girl magic nah she talked about an incident like they oh, were like man. why did when did you get into activism and bless her heart she's a very nice woman man um she's a very nice woman especially to me man very nice always gracious every time i saw her she said um when i was 15 we were at a movie theater and some black kids were in the movie theater, and they were talking and making noise, you know, just how teenagers do. And the usher came in and threw them out. And she said, we were all aghast. All the other people in the theater were, were terrified. And we went and talked to the manager and said, hey, that guy just threw those kids out. All they were doing was making a noise and talking just like any other kids. He threw them out. And we were upset. And they said, at that moment, I knew that I had to do something about this. And I was like, 
Oh man, I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> it's all it's all signs, bro. <laughs> I was like, what? But I was like, yo, I said, man, I was half sick, I was getting sick, and I was, you know, my wife was sick, and I was just trying to make it through the night, man. It's like what? <laughs> that's that's the event that made you become an activist, and now these white shit. people honoring you forty years later. Salute! But she a brilliant woman. Her her brains and her expertise, man. If she had used it for something else, man, she could have really changed the world in a tangible way. Um. Yeah, man. She, it's, she, it's, she, must, she must not know. She said her to subscribe right quick. You know? Check it out. Hell no. Nah, I ain't telling her to subscribe to this shit. Hell no. Nah. I think we had uh, three white children killed by blacks since you were off, Ock. Oh, I'm about to get into that tonight. Is that I'm going to show you all of that. Tonight. I may have missed some. That, that's not that bad to me. You know? You know how that shit goes. Let me put it in the back chat because I have kind of like been out of the loop. I have. I ain't gonna lie. I've been. I'm, in, I'm including the one in Chicago where she had a miscarriage because you know. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. That um. So, Couch Malo says salute to all the interview questions. Will be what interview questions he talking about? Oh, he talking about the the Brian Clark. Yeah, facts. So we gonna get into we got the, the numbers for February. Um, came out the numbers for February. Um, what is this? No, hold on. What, what 2024? Where are we at? Um, hold on. What, what month? Hold on. Tell me. I got what is the month that I the last month we were supposed to do? Um, not January. I gotta find this shit. Um, Nah, this is not the one I was looking for. Let me um let me find it. But yeah, hold it down for me while I um I gotta go get my wife some tea, man. Hold it down for me right quick. Um Yeah, the the sun man, he's on a roll as as usual. What do you mean? Oh, just 